the, the interesting thing is that we both, we sat down together in Barbara's office and we both, I, I said one thing and then she said, well, that's what I was thinking of. And um, I said, oh, this is great, you know, and she said, if we could have the seasons. I said, I did a mural of seasons before, but we can make this a learning experience for the children because these are all Northern Illinois um, uh, animals and birds and insects and caterpillars and little rodents and... <laughs> Oh, I, I think it was through Sam Oliver and the Citizens for Conservation because um, I think Sam was in, I know that the um, foundation was looking for an artist and they suggested me because I've done this many times before. And I'm, my, my children all went to school here. And, but I did a Buddhist temple in Chicago that was about three times the size of this and it was very intricate. And I did, um, a mural at Wickstrom Ford that's no longer there, and I painted a mural for the hospital, the Good Shepherd Hospital. Everything I do is different. Yeah. In the Buddhist temple, I, I did the seasons in Korea. I had, and there's no research because you go to the library, and everything is Japanese, yeah. and the Koreans are so different than the Japanese. They believe nature; you leave nature alone, and whereas the Japanese would, they'd form their plants or their ana, or you know, like the fish, the koi fish, and. Uh, what I got out of that is I learned so much from these wonderful Buddhists. It was wonderful. It is, it, no, it's, well, it's nature, no, it's, it's mostly human interaction in nature. You'll see rocks that are carved in there. Um, I did have some animals, and it was interesting. They have um, um, trees, and I can't remember whether they were pomegranates or, or what, but they pick only so many, and they leave the rest for the animals. And I, have, I had a lot of the parishioners I painted in the mural. And many of them could speak English. And they, when I painted one, um, a pair of young men, and they were praying at a, 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 some kind of altar, a monument or something, their mother came up and she said, oh, she said, thank you, because she didn't speak English. <laughs> they were her boys. <laughs> There's a lot of research that goes into it, and um, I had to find copy of the animals I wanted to paint and the insects. So I work at home, but we we decided that we it was about four months. Or during the process. Always. I look back, I go to people's homes, and I see a painting that I had done, and I would like to take it back so I could change something. So I think that I, you're never satisfied. Oh yes, I had um, a barricade right here. And um, when the children come through and many times a day, oh, we'd always have to look and what's she painting now? And you know, saying this is a, this is a, a turtle, a snapping turtle. And, and these are um, the caterpillars from the monarch. And they have to have uh, milkweed for the caterpillars to feed so they could turn into butterflies, but oh, I had lots of suggestions. The little ones said they wanted dinosaurs and lions, and are you going to make a tiger, and will there be a crocodile in the pond? And <laughs> so yes, we had a lot of interaction. It was fun. I, I think people were surprised to see this. I don't think there's anything like this in the district. Um, and uh, I think they were, they were, they were surprised because um, you know, it's so uh, detailed, but had, people came from places other than Barrington for the dedication, so that was very nice. Well, we worked with the foundation and the, the principal and the Citizens for Conservation. They were my guide, and although I knew what I wanted to do, I would refer to them and send them emails, and they say, is, it, was this, is this indigenous to Northern Illinois? And they'd say yes or no, and maybe, sometimes they would send me pictures, and. Some things I had to change because I thought they were indigenous, but they weren't. <laughs> I started in, well, I'll tell you what I did. I, uh, I knew that I wanted, I knew that I wanted the hills, mm -hmm. and I had a basic idea, and the, because when you look out anywhere in Barrington, you see all the um, brush in the background and the trees. So the first, I started by, with chalk, just plain old, 
cheap colored chalk, not pastels, and I, I gave a basic design of where the water would be, how the hills would go, so they were, I made them yellow and green and, and uh, with the, the, the trees behind, and then um, I started painting the sky. That's the first thing I painted. And I just painted it all blue, and then put the clouds in, and then I started, you, you have to, when you paint something like this, you have to go from the background to the foreground. Uh, otherwise you'd be painting around the trees and around the animals so uh, that's a logical way to do it and so that was very um, that was very quick backgrounds well my goal was to teach them animals about the animals they may see in their own backyards or walking in the forest preserve or crab tree nature center and it's the cycle of life and we, we talked about the um, sandhill cranes flying in, having their babies, which were called colts, I learned that. Um, and then, well, there was one time when they had a big snapping turtle right outside the window, and I w wanted to make sure the children would stay away. So they learned that that big mouth could really hurt them, so you, you must stay away. And then um, there's a very interesting plant Oh, and I went over to the CFC and I took pictures of the prairie. And there's, you see the little balls on that, on the uh, plant, right down there, right by the red. They're called, it's called rattlesnake master. And when they dried out, the Native Americans would use it for, with their children for a rattle. So you, I learned so much. And um, what else? Oh, and they were laughing at the fox who jumps up, but that's how they, they listen. They hear the little rodents under the snow, and they jump up like this and go in. Oh yes, I liked, you know, I liked the more active seasons the best with the flowers, and, but I just, I love those chipmunks, they make me laugh. <laughs> and I love the cranes, I, really, I, I think I loved everything. And there are two little um, coyote pups under the tree, and mom is, I think mom is over on the other side. And the other little pups are howling. Uh, when I was riding through the woods on my horse, we went over an area that we knew was a den, and out comes two little pups' heads. They were so they were about that age. They were so cute, and they go, "Oh, you're not my mother." So they ran, they snuggled back in, and I knew I wanted to do that for this. So you know, you draw from everywhere. As Barb said, I had sent her information that when we were in California on a vacation and hiking, I found a great photo of some raccoons that were really funny, and I wanted it to be amusing too. Respect the, the um, skunk and the uh, um, snapper, and when you see a little something like this, you go, oh, that's so cute, and you say, well, I know that they're, they're eating acorns, and squirrels are, I just, uh, found out that squirrels are one of the best planters of trees, so they're little arborists. And then we have hawks, red-tailed hawk, and I think I also have a sharp-shinned hawk someplace too. And the egrets, the great egrets come and they nest high in the trees. If they see a nest, they're going to go, Mom, that's an egret nest. Well, this is quite a gift from the foundation to the District 220, I think. And our children are older. You are more recent. <laughs> it was fun because of the interaction with the teachers. Oh, I love the teachers here. They're remarkable. And the children are so cute and interactive. So that was, I got, I got probably more than I gave.